Hey everybody, Andrew here out at the Howard Homestead with Joe from Premier One Supplies and we are going to go through the kind of the why we need a 3D fence for our orchard to keep deer out and he's going to go step by step on how to set up a 3D electric fence to keep deer out of your orchard. So Joe, what do we got here and how are we going to set this up? All right, so we're going to set up a normal two strand fence around the orchard and then with 3D, uh, a comment I hear a lot from folks is the perfect deer fence is a 12 foot brick wall or something higher. We, we're going to do something a little more portable today and we're going to add a little extra dim dimension to it. So that 3D aspect is the fence has width, it has height, and it's going to have depth. So deer, they don't see things the way we do, so adding a fence outside that original fence about another three feet is going to add some depth to our fence and the deer are going to have what we call landing anxiety, they're not going to be able to judge where they're going to land going over that fence, so they're going to stay on the outside. And once they get uh, accustomed to the electric and get a shock from it, because we're going to bait it, they're going to stay away. So uh, components, we're going to add in some fiberglass posts as our line posts. We're going to drive some steel tees that Andrew's provided. Uh, we have got our electric fence conductor, so this is enough to go around our orchard about three times, one for each, one for each strand. Uh, we have our apple scent, uh, a couple electric fence signs. To hold the conductors to our post, we have uh, either a, we have a clip-on clip or a screw-on clip for that purpose. Uh, jumping power from one strand to the next, we've got a set of our power links. We also like these on our netting for making connections between nets. Wonderful for that. Uh, for a nice tight fence, rather than just hand tight, we're going to add a P-spring and that'll add a little bit of tension to our fence, makes it look nice and uh, keeps things from sagging. We've got our terminal insulators. This is a heavy duty black plastic insulator that goes on the end of the fence, fence line at the T-post. Uh, because we're not going to put the conductor directly on the metal post, that'll short out the fence. So we're going to tie those on. i uh, got some gate components here. So we can get in and out. In the back, I've got my scent caps. We'll just do a quick brief how-to on that. It is essentially a conductive pop bottle cap with wire run through and a bit of cotton to hold that apple scent. So when they smell the apple scent, they're going to come to it. Come to it. Touch their nose to it. Whap. Gotcha. Stay off. Right. And what provides that whap? That is our solar fence energizer today. Depending where you are, you can also do battery or plug-in units, but we're bringing a solar one out. And don't forget, always get a fence tester. That way you know your fence is on and hitting hard. Right. So we'll go over that at the end of the video. That sounds good. So when we're setting up the, the rope itself, what are the heights that we're going to set these out around the fence? Uh, so on the inside fence, we are going to do about oh, two and four feet heights for those strands. You can go shorter. Um, I've seen fences that are only been two feet high mm -hmm. for a 3D fence around food plots. We're going to go a little higher today. And on that outside, you want that single strand in between the heights. So we're going to go about three feet high on that outside strand. All right, Joseph, we got all our stuff here. Mm -hmm. What are the first steps we need to do? First off, we need to get our T-post in, and then we'll set up our fiberglass line post. And once we get that done, we're going to put in our uh, clips to hold up the conductors. We have a couple gates to put in, and then we'll set up the energizer. All right, so we got the fence all set up and put around. Now take us through how we set up the energizer so that we connect all of the strands and make sure that they all have power. Okay, can do. So I've set up our uh, Solar Stop 80 Energizer. That's a 0.8 joule energizer. I have at my foot behind the unit is a ground rod and the ground lead from the energizer is connected to it. The fence lead from the energizer is connected to this P-spring. That powers this outside strand. These are my two endpoints. This, this connection here powers my gate. And this wire here powers my inside fence. This connection powers a gate, and this connects my two gates. So the power will come from the energizer, go to the conductors, and when an animal touches the fence, the power is going to go from the fence into the animal, into the ground, and travel via the soil moisture back to the ground rod of the energizer. And that's how an electric fence circuit is completed. So the fence, it doesn't have to complete a circle. So if I had a chicken coop, I could come off three sides, energize it, and be fine. Because what's completing the circle is the animal touching the fence. So we're in a circle today because just that, that's just how the paddock or uh, orchard is set up. But uh, 
we don't have to have it in a circle. So we're, we're going to turn this on and we'll be ready to go. All right, sounds good. So we got our scent caps out. We got our warning signs here just in case someone comes and visits the orchard and doesn't know that we have an electric fence out here. So I'm really thankful for this that we'll be able to protect our investment of the orchard from deer so that they can thrive and not be set back uh, for years to come. So if you need a electric fence or other livestock or fencing supplies, you can head over to premieronesupplies.com. And if you need an orchard to put inside of your Premier One fence, head over to starkbros.com.